Some people out there claim that the number of languages you can learn at the same time is unlimited. <laughs> of course they do. They own a language learning software company. But the fact of the matter is you can't learn an unlimited number of languages at the same time. I mean, think about it. There are only 24 hours in a day. A huge chunk of those hours are devoted to sleeping, eating, working, and other forms of self-care. At least I hope you're taking care of yourself. But the worst thing is, is that there are a lot of articles out there that claim your success with language learning depends on your motivation, which is really another way of saying it depends on your willpower. And this is problematic because top performers simply do not rely on motivation or willpower. Motivation doesn't work. Willpower does not work. What you need to do instead is use systems. Of course, there are things like intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, but really, how much do you understand about them and how much do they actually work in practice? Well, I'm not gonna dwell too much on that. I'm gonna give you something that's way more powerful than anything that has the word motivation attached to it when it comes to language learning. So let's bring this discussion of how many languages you can learn at the same time down to earth, bring clarity to what actually is possible. And the answer is not only gonna help you, but it's incredibly interesting too. This is Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMaryMethod.com. If you're new here, hit that thumbs up for the love of memory. And if you want detailed, in-depth discussions with practical tips that you can apply and actually get a result from, make sure you're subscribed to this channel or to my podcast, wherever you're listening to it. And the truth is that most people can barely find time, focus, and energy to learn one language at a time. There's no shame in this, none whatsoever. When I was in grad school and needed to learn biblical Hebrew as part of my PhD, that was the only language I studied period. I had to mow lawns at that time in order to keep my student debt as low as possible while also teaching courses, undergraduate courses. It was my first experiences as a professor. And even during a period of that, I was still working at Queen Video and doing all kinds of film promotional events when celebrities were in Toronto and all that sort of stuff. I was a very, very busy person. So I made my bet and I put my chips on the thing most likely to work with one tutor, one textbook, and one looming exam. Now later, when I was in Germany, I focused solely on acquiring German. And the only times that I studied more than one language at the same time was when it was after I knew how to learn a language in the first place. Only then did I focus strategically on learning more than one language at the same time. And then the magnetic memory method techniques that I teach really blossom. They really flower because you have that foundation that you've developed by learning how to learn and having an accomplishment that gives you a metacognitive overview of what a language is and then you can cross compare between different things and have these insights about what you're doing and how to do it. Now you might be wondering, well, what about children? Can't children learn multiple languages on autopilot? And you may have heard that children learn multiple languages with ease. They learn their mother tongue with ease. And this is true to a certain extent. For one thing, kids are very good at learning out of context. Why? Well, they're not looking for the meaning in everything. They're just observing and absorbing without the contextual judgments that adults have been trained to make. You know, I get emails almost every day and they say, well, I can't understand why that you would take associations, put them in a memory palace so that you could memorize a word in a foreign language. And I tell these people, listen, it's placing associations in space. We have more scientific studies than anybody has time to read. We have thousands of years of tradition. We have decades of records from memory competitions and scientists, they still don't know why the brain produces consciousness, let alone memory, right? And some scientists really want to get rid of the word memory because it's not sufficient to the cause of describing what's going on. So adults are constantly judging, they're categorizing, and there's a big problem with that. As mature individuals, we have misconceptions about our adult learning styles and even how to create or optimize a proper learning cycle that gets us to be like children again. So if there's one thing that's very, very true 
besides the contextual thing, letting go of context or not even knowing to bring in too much context and asking endless, unanswerable questions about context. So we need to get past that and just take action and be kids again. So what is it that is really helping kids besides the fact that they're not using all of this contextual baggage that adults constantly bring in? Well, some scientists call this socially contingent partners. That's what children have that adults tend not to have. What are socially contingent partners? Well, these are people willing to not only correct children as the children learn languages or other things, but to do so with reasonable accuracy. In other words, this means that children can really only pick up languages relative to their access to socially contingent partners, and their skills in doing it has a lot to do with the patience of those socially contingent partners, the lack of judgmentalism, and the ability of those socially contingent partners to have high accuracy. So in Germany, to take one example, uh, they have kindergartens, or Kita, as they're sometimes called amongst the locals, where the kindergarten teachers will be speaking three languages at once. And this is, this is really cool, and you can sort of pick and choose which three languages you would like to have in some parts of the country. And many experts think that three languages at once is the sweet spot for what? In order to provide enough access to socially contingent partners and skilled ones, ideally patient ones that don't judge and have a high level of accuracy. But three languages offered in one kindergarten was still relatively rare until recent history. And, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. Language learners should not compare themselves to children and they certainly shouldn't compare themselves to children that may have one of these really amazing kindergartens or kita in Germany. So it's tempting to think that children are exceptionally good at language learning, but this really isn't true. Yes, they're good at picking up things without needing them to be contextually related the way adults tend to need. But think about it. A shockingly high level of kids cannot write grammatically correct sentences even after graduating from high school. There are many adults who can't write grammatically correct sentences. I know because I get emails from them all the time. Now, I'm not judging anybody. I myself sometimes wonder, is this grammatically correct and so forth? But nonetheless, we all have varying levels of competence and playing games of comparison with children doesn't work. I can go into so many studies that show just how much writing practice individuals need in each language under instruction in order to develop meaningful fluency in the language. And this just means that kids are as time strapped as adults in many ways, but their time is strapped to having these particular kinds of socially contingent partners known as teachers. And the better the teachers are, or the more socially contingent they are in terms of patience and their accuracy and their willingness to let children explore and experiment, the better the results are going to be. And it's all the more reason for you to be learning memory techniques and teaching them to the young learners in your family. Get into mnemonics and really, really be that wonderful partner who can teach them with patience and accuracy. So many parents ask me, do you have something for kids? Well, I do have something coming for kids, but I'm more concerned with adults. I want you to become highly competent in these skills, and I welcome you to join me for Language of Memory Live. If you would like advanced notification, go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash L-O-M, which stands for Language of Memory, and you'll not only get advanced notification because this will fill up quickly, but you will also get a number of free videos where I take you deeper into how to become a competent user of memory techniques. The reality is, when it comes to language learning, is we will all need to focus on one language at a time. And then when you've developed the meta skills involved in learning new languages, you'll be able to focus on rotating between, let's say, two to three languages maximum at any given time. Myself, I have the foundations that I've settled more in German than in Biblical Hebrew. I don't even really use Biblical Hebrew at all anymore, except for a couple of quotes from the Bible that just help explain to people how they can memorize the Bible in two languages at the same time. But my German is quite strong, and I rotate between Sanskrit, Latin, and Mandarin. And it really is something that I don't think I would be able to do in the way that I can if I hadn't laid those foundations first. Again, if you want to learn all about how this is possible and have that mnemonic edge, Language of Memory is going to be the live cohort program for you. MagneticMemoryMethod.com forward slash L-O-M for advanced notification. Now, 
One little thing that you can get a boost from sometimes and a benefit from is if you're going to rotate between languages, choose languages that are close, such as maybe Spanish and French, or some people would say Portuguese and Spanish. I'm finding that just sight unseen when I come across Spanish, I'm understanding it better because of some of the focus that I've put onto Latin lately. Omnium expedendorum prima es sapentia in qua perfecti boni forma consiste. But one thing that you need to do is basically enable your brain to be able to have maximum exposure to the language without so much baggage, without so much contextualizing, without so much why does it work this way, and more absorption, ideally enabling yourself to absorb more with memory techniques. Use tactics like the memory palace. So let's say you're watching a movie on your favorite streaming service. You have the subtitles on and you just catch one little phrase or even one word that's interesting to you and you memorize it immediately, as quickly as possible. You can put it in a memory palace, use the association techniques and use recall rehearsal, like I talk about in the spaced repetition video on my magnetic memory method free content. You can search for that and then you're gonna get it into long-term memory a lot faster. And you want to give yourself access to socially contingent partners who can correct your mistakes, who have a high level of accuracy in the language, a low level of judgment, allow you to be like a child, mumble and bumble through the language and give you the corrections where you need it. And how about you say not old pen? Uh, na stara ruchka. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's you we are good, getting there. But, but what's better? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Now, we face the fact that languages really need to be in use. And so many of us have a longing desire to learn languages that aren't in use. Latin, for example, that I'm studying is in much more use now, and you can meet people through the internet. But my goal with Latin is not really to speak it. It's just to be able to read it better and have some brain exercise from working with the language and so forth. But finding qualified learners in a, in a language, even Latin or Sanskrit, it's not really a very big challenge anymore, not on the internet. But you want to make sure that you have teachers that have this wonderful X factor, and that can be a little bit difficult. So one of my tips for you, whether it's one language, two languages, three languages whatsoever, is don't get discouraged if you have a bad experience with your first teacher, your second teacher, your third teacher, or even your fourth teacher. Keep moving forward keep exploring, you will find someone who works for you. Now, another tactic that I want you to understand and practice, this is really, really important, and research shows that it works. I want you to create a mental image of what success looks like and try to find some people who are the real deal and think about what they've achieved. Many people exist who have learned 20 or more languages. Steve Kaufman is one example. But when you're creating a model in your mind of what another person has achieved, you also have to be really, really realistic about it. So as I understand it, Kaufman started with some early bilingual experiences. He's also been at it for over 50 years, but as I understand it, he didn't start on his ninth language until he was 60. So it's really, really important to know those things, to be realistic about them. He also created and represents a language learning site, Link, and so it's a professional focus. So in other words, don't pressure yourself to learn a language overnight. Kaufman didn't, and his background and interests propel him in ways that many people won't have had in their lives. So it's motivation of what's possible, but not something to be relied upon or discouraged by, but something to think about contextually. And I know I'm kind of contradicting myself. We don't want to have too much context, right? We want to have this context-free learning where we just absorb without judgment. But at the same time, we are adults. Our minds do tick that way. So we can use comparison without playing a game of comparison to inspire ourselves realistically and learn the story of how it actually worked and how it happened. And Link is a really great program that I use not every day and not even every week, but I go into it and uh, just, it, it's pretty amazing how, you know, you can have uh, political leaders, for example, giving their speeches in their languages and listen to the cool things that they say and, and you just absorb it. Uh, I absolutely love doing this and, you know, it's just like, Renjin, die! <laughs>
<laughs> which is, you know, lo big love for humanity, which I didn't know and probably never would have encountered any other way. So, you know, Steve Kaufman has done this, this great thing. And he's really frank in his videos about how he spent time in order to make his levels of fluency, which varies between different languages, happen. And, you know, some of the suggestions that I've given today are part of the suggestions that he gave. Now, I do have one kind of mini beef in the spirit of absolute charity with some people and some things that even Steve Kaufman has said, which is, you know, I don't use mnemonics and all that sort of stuff. Any sort of memory technique is a mnemonic. Mnemonic means memory technique. And sometimes they can be discouraging some of the people in the polyglot community because they'll say ah, mnemonics and all that sort of stuff. Really, I, I think that that's not something that I would ever, ever take seriously because I do use mnemonics. Many people do use mnemonics to learn languages. And we have a lot of research that shows that the use of memory palaces and associations can help people with depression and PTSD and so forth get relief from those conditions. That certainly helped with me. And my ultimate argument in response to anybody who poo-poos mnemonics is not only that you're flying in the face of the evidence that shows relief from problems like PTSD and depression. I have my own anecdotal story with that, which I've told many times. But the other thing is, is that there is no way I am using spaced repetition. I'm not using any device other than link on a big old screen. I just am not exposing my brain to that kind of stuff, not Anki or anything like that. Now I've talked about Anki and how to optimize it and done experiments to show how that it can be optimized from a realistic, mnemonic, scientific level. But at the end of the day, if you are drawn towards using memory palaces and associations, it is not to be discouraged by what anybody else says, ever, for any reason. Because I would not be able to have learned one language, let alone rotate between three or four languages, two or three languages, one or two languages, whatever I'm doing at that particular time. And there's just many, many benefits to getting what's called cognitive reserve by simply memorizing things. And if you find rote learning as tragically, disgustingly boring as I do through spaced repetition software, then you're going to want to explore the mnemonic edge and the difference and potentially the escape from depression that you might suffer or PTSD. So rather than waiting to feel motivated and rather than letting someone else's success demotivate you, here's what I suggest instead. Create a learning system that involves regular exposure, not only to the languages you want to learn, but also the people who can help you. And that's going to require making lots and lots of mistakes and using the big five of language learning, which is where I think Link is an amazing thing because it gives you a couple of those things at the same time. You get reading, you get listening, you get speaking. You can use it for some writing because of being able to take notes and so forth on the software. And you can memorize directly from the learning materials that are on the screen in a wide variety of languages. You can rotate between different languages using Link and it's just absolutely fascinating. So you can go between, say, Latin and Spanish, for example, or I go from Mandarin to German to Latin and, you know, the German stuff there is not as sophisticated as my level in German, but I still go through it and go through songs that I haven't heard before and you pick up little things in songs that aren't in any textbook, you know, they're not in any language learning class, but that's the big five, reading, writing, listening, speaking, memorizing. And my specialty is helping people memorize words and phrases. It's a big, big focus of mine. I don't want it to ever come across as some sort of magic bullet that's going to teach you a language. It's not. You need reading, writing, speaking, listening, and something that gets it into your memory. And if you prefer rote learning, that's fine. I, I can't do it. I can't get myself to do it. And I won't because I love using memory techniques. It's so much more fun and engaging for me. And I know it's fun and engaging for many, many people. For whatever reason, my passion is as such that I even get invited to be a commentator at things like the Pan American Open Memory Competition. And we just have so much fun in the memory technique world. It's, it's just astonishing to me that anybody would ever say anything against something that fun. It's like saying, uh, criticizing swimming. 
<laughs> but anyway, it's fun, easy, and systematic to be able to learn how to memorize vocabulary and entire phrases while being able to read, write, speak, and listen, and memorize directly from the material. So I recommend Link, and I recommend that you get involved in the Magnetic Memory Method. And if you are just longing to stretch how many languages you can learn at the same time, rest assured, I think, and I could be wrong here, but I think that for most of us, us mere mortals like myself, getting that one first language under your belt, it's going to get so much easier from then on in because you're going to have some experience creating a goal-based system for yourself and you're going to have some experience working out how that the grammar works relative to the grammar in your mother tongue and you're going to have some experience working with native speakers because you need that speaking and listening in real time with people babbling your way through like a child make it a kind of game which is another thing that link is cool about i mean i'm not really that into all the coins and stuff like that but some people are some people really really need that i don't i like to motivate myself through systems systems where i show up regardless of whether anybody's giving me a prize or not right but you know you right or you are at the level right now watching this where you can become a person who knows yourself better know thyself is the ancient wisdom i should learn how, how how that is said wherever it comes from i'm sure it's in ancient greek but i bet you it's even older than that right you know you and you have the opportunity to know yourself better and that's another reason to learn as many languages as you can because you'll know more about what consciousness is, how it manifests inside of your brain, and just work on having goals, systems, milestones, something where you show up whether you feel like it or not. Adults have the advantage over kids because you can think symbolically. You can think about time. You don't have to be told to show up when the bell rings for school and leave when the bell rings. Or do you? Maybe you do at your job. I don't know. But you can use the understanding of how that works to show up for language learning and learn faster than any kid ever could if you just start to get involved in the process. And when you do, it will be a breeze. I promise you it's not rocket science to get out a piece of paper, schedule your time, develop a system where you're showing up whether you feel like it or not, intrinsic, extrinsic motivation, you can spend your life studying that stuff. It's really that, scheduling your time, showing up whether you feel like it or not, and those are probably good things to provide your kids with as well, and that's what school is, <laughs> showing up whether you feel like it or not, and having those socially contingent partners who have this patience with you and a high level of accuracy in whatever it is that they're teaching you. At least that's what we hope is happening in schools. If you're willing to do that for yourself, well, first of all, hit thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of maybe tough love, blunt conversation, and get subscribed if you're not already, and Practice being an adult. Adults know how to do these things for themselves. And with a bit of thought, consistency, a piece of paper to schedule your time, to really test your goals, make sure you're learning a language you actually want to learn, let alone adding on two or three, you not only will be able to master that first language, but add on and rotate between two or three languages, or maybe even a little bit more, supplementing them, one word and one phrase at a time. And if you want to learn more, make sure you're part of the Language of Memory Live cohort at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash LOM for advanced notification. You are not a kid. You can learn a lot faster than a kid. I promise you, it is more than possible no matter how busy you are. I've never known a person busier than myself in many, many ways, and there are many other people who are busier than myself, and I don't know them personally, but I imagine them in my mind, and I don't use them necessarily for motivation or inspiration, but rather just a wake-up call to what is possible, factually possible, and use that accuracy that adults have to say, oh, well, the ninth language has started that late in life, you know, that this absolute radical honesty about what those people have done, whether it is a massive entrepreneur or a major language learner or a genius with a Nobel Prize, etc., etc. If you are realistic about what they've actually achieved and how they actually achieved it, it's not about motivation and it's not about inspiration. It's about engineering. Do the engineering well, and learning two to three languages at a time, 
will be a breeze.